Hello there. My name is Jacob, and I'm a teen guide with Anythink Libraries. And even though our library branches are closed, we still have lots of ways for you to enjoy really good stories. And one of those ways is Hoopla Digital. Um, really quickly, you can access Hoopla by either downloading the app or by visiting the website hoopladigital.com and then setting up a free account with your Anythink Library card. And that will let you check out up to 10 titles a month. And every one of those titles is always available no matter who else has it checked out. Now, one of the really cool features about Hoopla is that on top of ebooks and e audiobooks, it also lets you check out all sorts of other media, including comics and graphic novels. And so I thought I would um, just share some of my favorites today. Uh, in case you're not familiar, graphic novels, um, they tell stories by combining writing and artwork. And often the illustrations, they add as much to the plot as the text itself. So the best graphic novels I find are ones that really shine when it's clear that the writing and the artwork are working together. And you can kind of see ideas and themes emerge and intertwine through the illustrations and the text together. Um, the five graphic novels that I'll be talking about, they're written for audiences of readers really between fourth grade and 12th grade, so for tweens and teens. But I've picked ones that are all engaging enough that adults can enjoy them either together with kids or just on your own. Um, they're all great books. And I hope you try out some of these titles and maybe discover a whole new book format along the way. Um, I'll be going through these titles kind of by increasing age. So we'll start with books that are really good for younger tweens and then end with titles that are really good and appropriate for high school students. All right, so with that said, let's dive on in and see what we've got. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up Hoopla here and let's kind of go through them. All right, so the first book we'll take a look at is Minecraft Volume 1. It's written by S.K.M. and illustrated by Sarah Grayley. Um, and this is a title that I generally recommend to readers in grades 4 through 7. It follows our main character, Tyler, um, who moves to a new city, but he's able to stay connected with his friends through the adventures that they have playing Minecraft together. So there's Tyler. Um, one cool thing in Hoopla is that you can either read the pages or if the text is kind of small, you can either zoom in with a uh, magnifying glass or kind of click on a panel and then go through the panels individually. So they're a little bit larger, All right? So there he is in his room, logging on, meeting up with his friends in Minecraft. So we'll go back to the regular view. Ah, there we go. Um, the art style is kind of really simple and colorful and engaging. It mirrors the look of the Minecraft world, which is kind of neat. Um, Minecraft players will appreciate authentic references to the game. And the setting is you know, a really easy sell for readers who might otherwise be reluctant to pick up a book, but maybe they're into Minecraft. Um, that being said, playing Minecraft is in no way a requirement for enjoying this book. It features a really warm story of this group of friends and each member of their gaming group contributes to their joint role uh, on the mission they go on. There's a little bit of cartoon danger, but there's no graphic violence. Um, and the cast of characters is a really inclusive group who learn how to solve conflicts between themselves respectfully. Um, another cool feature of this book is that at the end, um, the artist writes about their drawing process and kind of shares how they designed the characters and came up with sort of the covers, right? So there's some notes on how the pages are laid out. And this is a cool feature that might inspire readers to make their own graphic novels, maybe set in the world of Minecraft, maybe set up in a whole new created world. Um, and really at its heart, this book is a story of connecting with friends when you aren't able to be near them physically, which I think that's something that we can all appreciate and connect to right now. All right, um, good. The next one that we'll look at is Invisible Emmy, which is written and illustrated by Terry Libinson. Um, and this one, as it already says, if you liked Smile and Sisters by Raina Telgemeier, you'll love this book. Um, it's got a similar theme and tone in how it approaches life in middle school. Um, now, even though this book is set in middle school, I would recommend it to slightly younger readers as well. So good for readers between grades five and eight, um, and especially fifth graders who might be a little bit shy and nervous about starting middle school would really enjoy this story. The whole book takes place over the course of a single day in school, and the main characters are two girls in the same class um, who have polar opposite personalities. Uh, Emmy is our main character, and she's kind of shy and quiet. She processes the world around her. 
Um, her chapters are written in that sort of illustrated diary style that you might know from Diary of a Wimpy Kid or Dear Dumb Diary. Um, whereas the other character, Katie, there is much more outgoing and her story is told in these kind of bright, vibrant colors, really smooth um, motion in all of the panels. And she's kind of a popular girl who just breezes through life. And the book alternates between these two perspectives, um, changing the art style between every chapter, which is a really cool way of illustrating how two people can experience the same thing in completely different ways. Um, and I found it really fun to kind of switch back and forth between those two formats. It keeps the story from getting too stale. Um, I think my favorite thing about this book is just Emmy's kind of tone of voice and the humor in every page. I think it had me laughing on every second page. Um, I won't give away too much, but there's a really cool twist close to the end that sort of adds a whole new layer to this story. Um, and if you like this book, the author just came out with a sequel called Positively Izzy, which is also available on Hoopla. So there's a second book to follow up with. All right. Um, another book that's written kind of in two alternating perspectives is Sheets, written and illustrated by Brenna Thumler. Um, and this is a book I generally recommend to readers in grades six through nine. It's got some darker themes, but they're treated in a way that never feels disturbing. Um, as I mentioned, it switches back and forth between two stories. One story follows Marjorie, who is a girl who, after her mother's death, runs her family's small business laundromat all on her own. And the other story follows Wendell. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, go to our page list. I think he comes in right around page 25 or so. Not quite. There he is, right? So that's Wendell. And he is a ghost living more or less in the land of the deceased. Um, and his overactive imagination isn't really winning him many friends among the other ghosts. Uh, now, Marjorie and Wendell's stories, they start to kind of cross over into each other's worlds. And both of them have problems that they're not able to solve on their own. And they find really surprising ways that they can help each other out. Um, and well, for ghosts that are, you know, in the classic guise of animated sheets, a laundromat is a setting that is just ghost paradise for them. Um, I also really love the art style in this graphic novel. It's got kind of muted watercolor illustrations, which gives the story sort of a slower, more thoughtful feel. And at times it almost feels like you're slipping into the waters of these two different worlds, um, into the pastels and grays of the artwork, which is a really cool effect. Um, it also features one of the most deliciously annoying antagonists. Um, we saw him a moment ago. Uh, that guy there, he's just the worst um, in a really, like I said, delicious sort of, ah, love to hate him sort of way. All right, got two ones left. So let's go to another book that's set in a classic school, middle school setting, New Kid by Jerry Craft. Um, this book is just a perfect merging of really creative artwork and brilliant writing. And it's no surprise that it won both the Coretta Scott King Award and the Newbery Medal. Um, this is a book that I would generally recommend to readers in grades seven through 10. Uh, it addresses some heavier topics, including diversity, stereotyping and racism and belonging and identity. And it does so in a really honest and approachable way. Um, this would be a really great book for teens and parents to read kind of in parallel and then come together and discuss what they thought about it. Follows Jordan, our main guy here. Um, he's a seventh grader with a really artistic skill for sketching and it follows him for one entire school year as he switches to an elite private school across town from his family home in the Washington Heights neighborhood of New York. Um, and this is a graphic novel that really, really uses the art aspect to give a deeper level to the story it's telling. Um, so for example, there's, ah, right, so it's full of Jordan's sketches and here's his feelings about the first day of school. Um, and then later on, there's a moment where he's walking into his school's cafeteria for the first time and he becomes this teeny tiny little character surrounded by all these giants around him. And it really captures that feeling of just being confused and uncertainty and feeling out of place. And the book is peppered with moments like that where kind of a fanciful imagination is expressed through the artwork and it gets to the heart of the story being told. Uh, playing around with size, like in this panel, um, right here they are being shooed away by some upperclassmen. 
Um, playing with size is a common theme, and there's all sorts of other wonderful little details to pick up on that are really fun. Similarly, Jordan's facial expressions throughout the book are a really captivating view into his emotional landscape um, and how he reacts to the challenges that he's facing. And those are challenges, there's some more of Jordan's doodles. The challenges that Jordan faces are ones that any middle schooler will relate to or any adult who can remember their middle school years. All right, and we're gonna finish up with a book called The Oracle Code, um, which is written by Marika Nishkamp and illustrated by Manuel Pretano. And this is definitely a book for slightly more mature readers. I would recommend it to readers in grades eight through 12. It's set in the DC universe and it follows teenager Barbara Gordon, who's a talented computer coder and the daughter of Commissioner Gordon. Yep, it's that Commissioner Gordon, the sometimes friend and ally of Batman. And after a gunshot leaves Barbara paralyzed from the waist down, she's sent to a rehabilitation clinic. And once there, she discovers there's something really odd about the place. Um, this is another one that's good to read in that sort of panel by panel view, where you can click through so you can kind of see all the text and details going on in there. Um, in this story, Barbara struggles with both internal and external challenges. So externally, she's investigating the weird things going on around her. And internally, internally she has to come to kind of terms with losing the use of her legs and the way that that accident has affected her relationships with her friends and family. Uh, ultimately, this is a story about ghosts. It's a story about solving puzzles. Um, it's also a story about sort of finding lost friends and finding yourself um, and the stories that help you do that. It's got a really nice creepy art style as well, which brings to life the old manor house that it's set in. Um, you can see, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great panel right there. Um, as you're reading this story, where did we go? There we go. Um, you can really feel kind of the creaky floorboards and the rattling pipes and the secrets buried deep in the walls of this manor house. It's one of those stories where the setting almost becomes another character in the story and the illustrations really do a great job of filling out that character. Um, so if you're looking for a bit of a spook in your book, this is a title that you would really enjoy. All right, so those are five great graphic novels um, that are all available on Hoopla that I hope you'll enjoy. Uh, leave a comment if you've read any of these already and say what you thought, or if you have any other recommendations for really great graphic novels that you've enjoyed, um, definitely post that. And thank you for watching. Be sure to visit anythinglibraries.org for more resources all through the next couple of weeks. And be well and stay curious.